Let's get physical, it's Jordan here, back again with this week's update on all the physical releases coming to the Switch, where in the first week of February, February 1st until the 5th, Monday to Friday. Retail, low print and imports, plus our community spotlight where you show off your pickups and potentially win a prize. Let's begin with the retail releases. Over in North America, you guys are getting an all-time classic that Europe have been savouring for a long time. My Universe Pet Clinic Cats and Dogs. In this title, you are a vet taking care of animals, jabbing them with needles if need be. I don't know. I've been told that for what they are, they're actually supposedly all right games, but I will not be trying these for myself. ReZero subtitle subtitle should be releasing physically in Europe this week. Amazon says otherwise, but I didn't hear of a delay. Anyways, this release in North America last week is supposed to be pretty good. A visual novel with adventure elements and it's based off a nice anime, which I wish I had the time to watch, but I don't because I've got too much stuff going on. Codes in a box are always a bit of a disappointment, especially when it's a game I wouldn't mind physically. In the UK, it appears Made of Skur is getting a code in a box, which sucks monkey butts. Now that was a brief retail, right? But let's jump into the low prints where we've got some uh, some nice entries this week. Green Hell is the fourth game from Forever Limited. They recently put up pre-orders for Thief Simulator, Panda Dragoon, and Sparkle Ultimate Collection. This time it's a survival game that I've actually heard is pretty good, brutally tough, but surprisingly deep. I don't know though, the footage I've seen on the Switch, it looks kind of rough, but I'm open to your opinions as always. On Forever Storm, there are two variants, a standard edition as well as a limited edition, which includes a multi-purpose tool, cleaning cloth, enamel pins, certificate, and sticker. Spinch, or as I keep seeing it, Spinach, is getting a physical release from I Am 8-Bit. This is a game that's definitely up their street. They like a bit of weirdness. This is supposedly really good. Now, it says that this is an I Am 8-Bit exclusive cover edition, so I wouldn't be surprised to see this get like a retail release or elsewhere. I don't know, but I'm not 100% on that. The game itself is labelled as a psychedelic platformer, and I have no idea what to make of it personally, but our executive producer Boombox has chosen it as their pick of the week. Also for vinyl soundtrack collectors, I Am 8-Bit have that for this game too, and you can pre-order now. Iron Wings is Red Art Games' latest Switch pre-order. There's 2,800 copies available. This is a shooter set in World War II, which always has me like intrigued. It tries to do a little bit more than your average shooter though, with small mechanics like camouflage choices. Apparently, uh, the cover art kind of looks a little generic, but I don't know, it could be a good one. You can pre-order this from Red Art Games now. Sadly, our discount code has expired, but you know I'm sure they'll have a nice little deal on this at some point in the future. Liberated Enhanced Edition is getting a North American variant thanks to VGNY once again. I haven't brought up the European version from Pixel Heart in Europe yet, but I thought I'd mention the VGNY one now, which is over pre-order today, since there are only 1,500 copies available of this cover variant. Like most of their releases, the cover art is pretty cool. Um, like I said, you can order the European version right now if you want to, and this is a very stylistic sort of adventure platformer kind of thing. And this is Brent McLean and Santa Tartaruga's Pick of the Week. After Party is Limited Run's latest release, this is an adventure game, visually very appealing. Its premise is simple, you're in hell and the only way to get out is to out-drink Satan. This features a well-implemented conversation system where you can uncover people's personality. It's supposedly very good and you can pre-order this from Limited Run Games right now. And it must be decent since God of Resin, Dane Wilkinson, Jonathan Rumor and Gannicus have chosen this as their pick of the week. Now, there's not much in terms of imports this week, but I'll just point out that I did review a couple of imports last week. If you missed my review of Mersham Forest and Citizens Unite, head over to check those after this video. But this week, well, there's not a whole lot. Doraemon Learning Collection, that is kind of what it says on the tin. Here you have four learning apps, one for math, one for English, one for a brain workout, and one is for Japanese learning. I don't believe there's any English on this, which would be totally understandable. 
Now, I don't mention Kickstarters too often, but I do want to mention one that has a Switch physical. It's currently up for backing and is the lovely looking over Magicka, which is a mix of Harvest Moon and Pokemon. I've played one of the demos for this and I fell in love with it instantly pretty much. Plus it cites Azure Dreams as one of its influencers, so that's an instant win right there. You got my money. It looks really cool and I am put down for a physical limited edition. And this is Alexander Kato's Pick of the Week. Right, let's jump into the Let's Get Physical Spotlight. Remember, if you're shown off in this series, then at the end of the month, you'll be in chance with the winning a uh, physical Switch game. I don't know what February holds for the prize, but I'm sure I'll choose something before next week, maybe. Firstly, me, what to talk about? Well, I've been doing this for over a year now, so I'm at the point of forgetting what I've shown and what I've not shown. So I apologize if I end up talking about the same thing for a second time. Anyways, this week, let's go with Kamen Rider Climax Scramble. Have I talked about this before? I don't know. Uh, anyways, the Asian release of this game has English as an import exclusive. I don't think the Japanese one does though. But yeah, this even has an English cover variant for Southeast Asia. If you don't know what this is, it's a pretty basic arena brawler. Up to four people can duke it out with 31 different riders from the Kamen Rider universe. I haven't actually played this myself yet, but I did pick it up whilst being hyped up for the latest Kamen Rider game on the Switch, which I reviewed late last year, Memory of Heroes. I think fans of the series will get more out of this one than someone who's never even heard of Kamen Rider. But, you know, as someone who's interested in obscure imports, it's a nice addition to my collection. Links are below if you want to pick this up yourself with our discount code for a tasty 5% off any physical item from Play Asia. All right, on to you lot. There were so many submissions this week, so I hope I got everyone. Uh, I'm just going to choose people at random and then have a nice little roundup. Anaheim Rookie, many thanks for using our links and discount code to pick up these. The beautiful Witch Spring 3 Early Bird Edition. I think that may have sold out now, which is a pity. Uh, plus some European exclusives, Morbid, Untold Stories, and Coffee Crisis. I actually put out a poll uh, a week or two back asking our members which import theme they wanted next. One option was the European physicals that North America never got, but looks like that will have to wait a while. <laughs> Blackstar picked up the beautiful looking collector's edition of Riser 2. Mine also arrived in the UK. Sadly, I will have to wait a long time before I can actually get my hands on it. Brian picked up a couple of European low print goodies with War Tech Fighters from Red R and Evo Land from Super Rare. I don't know if that's a recent pickup since it was a while back they sold that one. Chit Chat Gaming picked up these three games. Uh, I think that has to be my favorite cover variant of Panzer Dragoon. It looks, I don't know, majestic. Maybe that's the word for it. Man, I really want it, but not at that price. I wish it was retail. You know, but if it was retail by now, it'd be $20 and I would be all over it. Chris Dade, many thanks for using our links and codes on the Final Fantasy goodness. Two essential imports, in my opinion, plus cross code from Strictly Limited, finally. Danny Boy showed off a wealth of games here. Some recent pickups. Have to admit, I don't think that we've seen Tropico here too often. I thought that would be a really popular game, kind of like Civilization or something. Although, I don't know how well received the Switch port was. I didn't see any reviews for it. Elisa got down with the thickness. Apparently, my love sharing made people shell out a lot of money for both games, not just the recent one. L. Peanut picked up the Luigi variant of Mario Kart Live. We all know Luigi is a true number one in our hearts. By the way, come on Nintendo, how long has it been since like Mario Kart 8? It feels like it's been like 10 years or something. Can't be far off. Flower Angel Rave got these January pickups. The great looking double pack of robotics games. Supposedly really good double visual novel set. Also, I saw the news that Sakuna had sold 850,000 copies of which I'm sure all have been submitted into this spotlight section. I've had to mention it so goddamn much. You guys are mad for it. Executive producer Ganek has picked up these games. Jump King and River City Girls are imports. I, I tend not to divulge affiliate information too much, but... I don't know what's going on with you guys, but there's been a surprising spike in River City Girl purchases from PlayAsia, seemingly out of nowhere. It's like in our top 10 games sold over the last couple of months. I haven't even talked about it, so I don't know like where the interest has come from, but I ain't complaining. I very much appreciate your guys' support, and I definitely want this for myself. Gary Dawson sent in a couple of pictures with a lot of low print goodness. I see that Star Wars Racer is finally getting sent out, which means that I should probably be getting my Grandia anytime soon now. Geese nuts. <laughs> 
Geese Nuts uh, sent in this picture. Not sure if that's a belated uh, favorites cover, but it could be because they're all top quality. Monster Hunter there. Okay, who's hyped up about Rise? Not really my kind of game. I enjoyed the first 3DS one, but I just don't have the time for them. They're just they're just too massive of games. Executive producer God of Resin picked up these games recently. Again, big box of Atelier will be seeing that fair whack. Also, Peaky Blinders. Last time I mentioned this, I said that I hadn't watched the TV show. Well, over Christmas, I managed to finish the first season, which I absolutely love. Top Telly from the BBC. Goal Bat Lover sent in this photo showing off some interesting titles. We have the US version of Iron Fury, which took a long time to get over there, but thankfully the wait has been worth it. It's a really great game, similar to the recent Project Warlock that Super Edge just did. James Church did a nice little unboxing of Riser 2 for us, the collector's edition, which has some really nice extras. Thank you very much, James. Jim Wiley picked up these games with the Japanese version of Shirin, which apparently the art book is just pictures, so no words if you don't fancy waiting for the more expensive limited run version. Also, Moon. Joel Parker picked up Neurovoider from Red Art Games. I recently showed this off in my Spotlight episode, uh, and it's a fantastic game, possibly one of Red Art's best games that they've had. Really great roguelike shooter with RPG elements. Juan loved it. John Crodict also picked up a double helping of Riser. Can't go wrong there. Kishimoto picked up Dragon's Dogma for a bit of a bargain. I find it incredible that this physical version never released in Europe. Only America and Japan, who also got a small collector's edition for it. It's a fantastic game. Luchi, I hope I have pronounced your name correctly this time around. Picked up these games. Again, Capcom, no Mega Man 11 in Europe. Your European outlet is a shambles. And there was me hoping for like the, like the new Ghouls and Ghosts would get a physical fat chance of that. Max1216 sent in this photo. A bit of an eye dazzler for sure. Lots of fantastic first party titles in here. I love Yoshi's Crafted World artwork. It was actually a contender for me last week, but like a few others, lost out to Okami. Mercadeni sent in this photo of a couple of great games, especially Octopath Travel. I'm hoping for a sequel to this maybe next year. Maybe, I don't know. You know, a bit of tweaking to the design and it could be an all-time classic. No Name, that's really his name, picked up these including the Japanese version of Celeste, which is a great way to pick up this masterpiece if you missed out on Limited Run and Don't Live in America. Links are below. Panzer Thief Zero picked up these from Japan. Two classic games that I can easily recommend. I'm not sure what the price is of the US Monster Boy these days. I know at one point it wasn't easy to get a hold of, but the Japanese version should be a reasonable price, I would imagine. Ramiro Flores sent in this picture of some fine games, a few red art games like Children of Zodiacs. I want that. Pode, the artist edition, which is absolutely stunning. Also, Fight of Gods. The memes are worth it alone. Renato Fares also got in the premium box of Riser 2 along with Turrican, and they said that they thought this was much better value for money than Strictly Limited's. Robert picked up these, including the stunning Kamiko from B-Side Games. I got this, of course, and I love what they did with it. Robotech, I think, used our Play Asia links to pick up these. Uh, see, River City Girls, like, I don't know why. Also, I Am Setsuna's Beautiful, and I've been tempted to pick up a second-hand copy of Devil May Cry Trilogy. The codes have been used, so it's only the first game, but you know, $10, maybe? That seems worth it, right, for the first game? Shikification sent in an eye dazzler. A lot of red art games in there, alongside some other fun games. I haven't seen Monstrum here too often, nor Shadowgate. Shadow714, many thanks for using our links and codes for some of these delicious games. Uh, at least three essential imports in here, like uh, Atelier Dust Trilogy, Moro Crystal H, and Food Girls. Okay, maybe the latter isn't essential, but you know, it's a really nice experience and I liked it a lot. Sky Racer turning up the heat here with a double helping of Riser 2 Collates Edition with a statue of the first Riser. They have pre-orders open for the second Riser statue on PlayAsia now. It ain't cheap and my wife would kill me, but I really want it. The One picked up Riser 2 along with another recent release from them last week, ReZero, with the double subtitle. Hopefully Europe's release is this week. Tired Aiden wants to join in with the Super Mario 3D All-Stars fun. Just a brilliant package, even if they kind of half-assed it. Pretty much essential if you're a Switch owner. Tony Rend picked up these games, including good old Final Fantasy IX. Also, Cooking Mama. What are the prices for this these days? I remember there was like a panic frenzy saying it would be rare if the game got recalled. I haven't heard anything since. I even bought it because I'm kind of dumb. 
V is a legend. Last week's epic import section meant that he had to go and sell a kidney to pick up most of these. What a legend. Mansion Forest, Citizens Unite, Ringo and Stone, but a Ghost Runner, which actually came with a, a soundtrack CD, which is surprising. Absolutely top dog. He even got in Shing from a couple of weeks ago. I am insanely impressed and insanely jealous at the same time. Visipon got in three cute games, a bit of Nep, a bit of Grandia, and a wholly not Jordan approved Senran Kagura Reflections. But you know, whatever floats your boat. Xtrana4 sent in a belated favorites cover with uh, Nep, the massive box of Fitxtella Link, and Age of Calamity. Yo Daddy picked up these two games, a nice bit of Itter from Super Rare. Zoo Kumpf Tiger sent in a picture of the lovely looking Grandia HD collection. All right, now it's time for a roundup. Andrew Kelly, Captain Slow, Champ Dancer, Chew It, Choco Loco James, Craw, Certified, Etienne, Flutter Shout, Goma, Griffin, Jaro, Jupa, Lars, Lucazone, Pabs, Peter Clark, Punky Dootster, Raven Knight, Rain, Riz, Robert, Rovest, Steven665, Stevie, Streaming on the Corner, Tim10, Ying, Yusha, Zero Flux. And that's it, guys. Always enjoy seeing what you guys pick up. Please send me your pictures on Twitter over at So What About the Game. You can DM me or you can tag me in a post and use the hashtag Let's Get Physical and I'll give you a nice little retweet. Or you can email it into us at contact us at switchwatch.co.uk. Just make sure you start the email title with Community Spotlight so don't miss it. Plus, we have a Discord, which is a nice way for us to have a chat with you guys. And you can submit your pictures there in the submission section. Discord link is below. Please group all your games together and send me just one picture because it really helps me out so, so so much unless of course it's an unboxing which of course i will be happy to show off in multiple pictures right guys hope you enjoyed this episode of new physical special thanks to our executive producers dane wilkinson god of resin boombox brent mclean jonathan rumor ganicus santa tartaruga alolan jojo and alexander kato and all the others who have joined our memberships please check out last week's episode in case you missed it we also have a brand new channel dedicated to ps5 and xbox content we try to make a weekly video which i highly recommend you check out plus last week's reviews many thanks for watching all the way through if you did give me a high five as always so i can spot the legends amongst you take care guys have a good one